Okay, pause the YouTube. Six Foot Hex here. Happy you guys today, the team builder for week number three of GBA D League season four. Now, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to hammer arm that thumbs up button and down below. And also let me know in the comment section below what are the six Pokemon that you would have brought to this matchup if you were building for it. And I actually want to say thank you to those of you who have done that because I know like one person left me like a little paragraph of like all the sets he would bring and why. And I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, if you guys want to put down the six mons you would potentially bring, I would be interested to see what uh, your potential differences are from the squad that I brought now this team builder and the week 4 team builder are going to be done on showdown very quickly because they're gonna be uploaded when I'm on vacation with my family out in uh, Disneyland is it Disneyland I think it's Disneyland I'm pretty sure it's yeah because Disney World is in California it's on the other side of the country where, yeah I'm pretty sure it'll be Disneyland but uh, we're gonna be on, vac on vacation there and uh, uh, I'm gonna be gone the weekends that week 3 and week 4 go up so Come week five, uh, we'll be back to the regular Wi-Fi team builder things. So I know you guys really do enjoy those. So yeah, just kind of bear with me for these two weeks. Hopefully you guys do understand. And uh, this team builder is actually going to be recorded after I've already played Zazo because I firmly believe that Zazo is going to make playoffs. Uh, he hasn't played in a minute, but in his peak, I think he was considered like top five, uh, top three, possibly best draft league players. So him kind of coming back and uh, getting into the swing of things is going to make him very very dangerous for me and everybody else in the league so I, I do firmly believe you'll make playoffs so I'm not gonna be going into uh, too much specific detail for my sets and I did kind of uh, fix around or fix or take off some of these that I didn't use but I didn't take off like the obvious stuff because Zazu's a smart guy I'm pretty sure you can piece things together and like run calcs and realize oh he's running this or possibly this and all that so yeah I did take off some moves too that didn't show because I don't want to spoil them so hopefully you guys do understand I know uh, this is probably gonna be the only team I do this for because if I had to bet money on playing somebody in playoffs it would be Zazo and um, I'm probably gonna do my other team builders just regularly but just for this team builder it's just gonna be like that so I hope y'all do understand and uh, let's get into the first mon here so our first mon is Alamomola now the thing about Zazo's draft is that it's it's very very fat while also being uh, scary offensive wise Garchomp is terrifying with Z moves I think is a humongous humongous issue he does have the Zapdos, which uh, could definitely come with Defog, considering that he doesn't have a Granite Poison type, and T-Spikes could potentially be worth uh, bringing to this game. And then uh, Mega Deontay is terrifying. Uh, Me uh, Heracross! Heracross is literally... It just comes in, clicks a move, and things die, depending on the set that he's running, whether it be Bandit or Guts, uh, or maybe Sub or something along those lines. But uh, if, it, if it is something like that, then a Heracross just kind of comes in and uh, it wrecks us. If it's Scarf, I really think that's the worst set he could run if it's Scarf, because if it's Scarf, then he can't break as well as he would if he was like Bandit or Guts or something like that. So, uh, yeah, Heracross is absurdly terrifying. Krugadal has a decent enough matchup, I think, just because of him being able to come in, click knock off on my Mons and uh, get a Brox, as well as potentially Pursuit Trap to wear things down. Then he does have Pharaoh Seed and Blissey. Blissey is legitimately his only stop to Magirna. And I feel like he may bring it at the same time though, knowing Zazo, he's probably hoping that I'm going to over prep for it and not be ready for it at all. So, or over prep for it is what I mean. And then he's not going to bring it at all. So then I have all that prep for Blissey and then he doesn't have it so he can take advantage of something. I don't expect Go-Goat, uh, Blaziken and Go-Goat I feel like have the worst matchups in this game. Then again, it's Zazo and he doesn't need to bring his A game to our first match here. So yeah, I have to uh, keep that in mind. But let's take a look here at the first Mon, which is going to be Alamomola. So yeah, Alamomola here is our first Mon. Uh, this is kind of like my best way of trying to switch in and deal with Heracross to an extent. Like Rocky... Rocky Helmet. <laughs> yes, I, did, I was going to say Rock Helmet for some reason. But yeah, Rocky Helmet allows us to uh, kind of rack up burn damage or just chip damage on him in general. Because if he does have Guts, then he's going to be taking 6% from the burn and the 16% from the Rocky Helmet. I'm pretty sure it's 16% if I'm not mistaken. And uh, leftovers don't realistically help us out too much on the set. Between Ice Beam and Liquidation, we kind of just hit everything for decent enough damage. Obviously, we can't really beat something like Blissey 1v1 unless we get a whole lot of defense drops. And uh, we're not doing too much to Ferrothorn unless we freeze it, so not too concerned about that. But yeah, uh, this was a very defensive Alamola. Pretty sure you could be able to tell that from from the calc that he was or just the damage that he was doing to me but i don't want to go into like the specific uh defense evs and potential other evs going around but for the most part alamola is just really here to help check the heracross it's also kind of nice to help check the garchomp and the mega Deontay, as well as potentially the talonflame if he does bring something 
like SD uh, Gale Wings, which uh, could be very terrifying. Although I don't kind of, I don't really expect Talonflame because if he is gonna bring Hazard Removal, then I think it has to be with Zapdos. Like he only has Zapdos. Uh, I guess he could maybe have Defog on the Blaziken, but I'm not too sure if he could even fit uh, Defog on the Blaziken because he may be um, like Life Orb mixed or Agility, um, something with priority like the Vacuum Wave. So I'm not sure if he could fit the defog on there because baton pass alone is just a really good move on blaziken for momentum but yeah uh, alamomola here is just kind of to be a, a defensive pivot into most of his physically offensive mons next up we have ember moon the cresselia here which uh is probably our kind of best answer to garchomp uh sd garchomp is absurdly terrifying with the z moves uh, if he doesn't bring that then we can still kind of use this to uh spread toxics around which toxic is actually really nice because if he does bring something like Calm Mind Slowbro, then we can talk to that. We can talk to Blissey potentially beat it 1v1. Uh, we can talk to Zapdos, the Garchomp, the Crocodile, and even the Go Go. Toxic in general, I think, is just really good in this match. Obviously, if he does bring Mega Deontay, I need to be very careful. And I can't just kind of blindly spread Toxic. But Protect also kind of works in tandem with Toxic because we're going to be rocking up that damage. Ice Beam, I think, is, well, is good enough for being our only real offensive move on the set because it does hit everything on his team and the one thing that resists it we toxic it anyways so nothing can really get a free switch in on Cresselia like yeah it's not doing that much damage but still it's doing a little bit of damage regardless and every little bit of damage could definitely come in handy if we are able to get up our hazards in this match so our next team member here is going to be Asuka aka Magirna now of course as I mentioned he does not really have anything to stop this outside of Blissey now I think originally I was going to bring something like Shift Gear, but ultimately I changed it to Volt Switch just because I felt that if we're in a situation where I can't set up freely, and if he does have Blissey, then I can Volt Switch out against Blissey, or I can kind of just use this to keep up momentum and I can still pressure him. If I get a special attack boost and he's going to try and rely on Garchomp, uh, Earthquake from Heracross, or Crocodile to potentially knock me out, then I have the Shuckleberry, so I could pick up a surprise KO then. And that could be uh, definitely amazing in my opinion. So I decided to go with a Volt Switch set. Um, from, from the damage output that I was doing to Anisha now that I, I was running a lot of special attack investment. This is not the exact... Is it the exact? I don't even know. I, I changed this up a couple of days ago and I'm just not trying to remember if it is or isn't. But hey, if it is, it is. If it's not... Okay, well, we'll worry about it later, but yeah, just in general, Magirna has a phenomenal matchup in this game. If he doesn't have Blissey, this just kind of comes in. Bolt Beam coverage just destroys everything on his team. Uh, yeah, we don't hit the Ferrothorn with this coverage that we have right now, but there's always potential that we could have had like a fighting move, uh, HP fire, or maybe like Kill Bell, Pain Split. I, I don't really know what else we could have potentially had. I'm still upset that Magirna doesn't learn Toxic. Like, why do you not learn Toxic? Here, I'm just going to put Toxic. There, we had Toxic. <laughs> Our next mod here is going to be Nia Jax aka Nidoqueen which was running a nice uh, tank set this matchup which honestly I felt like tank Nidoqueen was going to be pretty solid. This is also a nice answer to potentially the Heracross if it's not carrying the Earthquake because then that way we can uh, hopefully get off some damage on him or pick him off with either Earth Power or Ice Beam. Uh, T-Spikes are really nice as well in this matchup mainly because his best way of getting rid of them is Defog Zapdos or Blaziken. I suppose Defog Talonflame if, if he were to bring Talonflame, but I don't expect Talonflame, honestly. And then I guess he could try to be aggressive with Mega Deontay, expecting me to T-Spike and try to switch it in so I don't get up T-Spikes. But T-Spikes and Stealth Rocks are going to be very, very helpful in this game, especially Rocks. If he does bring uh, Double Birds, then being able to get up Rocks is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So our next team member here is going to be Shinsuke aka the Mega Medicham. We only showed three moves. The fourth move can honestly be anything. Uh, Bullet Punch knocks out the Mega Deontay if he brings it. Uh, we could have potentially gone with like Substitute or Baton Pass even. Even Fake Out I think had some merit on it potentially. And um, just in general, Mega Medicham was absolutely disgusting this match because we legitimately 2 ako everything. Like, they're, we 2 ako max defense, max HP, slow bro with Thunder Punch. And that's ridiculous, man. Like, Mega Medicham, it's like an absolute truck. And this thing kind of comes in. I really didn't think that just uh, having high jump kick was worth it. Like, Drain Punch, in my opinion, is really nice. Because he could very well have, like, Rocky Helmet on Slowbro. He may try to chip us down with, like, Rocky Helmet 
uh, Zapdos or something, maybe try to rely on Flame Body, Talon Flame, and then at least that way we have some type of recovery. But these are the three moves that I did show. And uh, but yeah, again, Bolt Beam coverage is just really good against this team. And along with Drain Punch as a stab was super nice. Cycle Cut was also going to be uh, really good to uh, potentially have something else. Or Zen Headbutt, actually. Zen Headbutt might have been uh, nice for the, the uh, what's it called? The extra power if we were to bring that. So our final team member here is going to be Guerrero. Much like Zydog in Elite 2, this just did nothing. It died, or it didn't die, or it just got murdered. I don't know, but it did nothing. So I don't want to give anything away. But yeah, like I said, I didn't really want to go into much detail about this specific team build in case I do have to bring some of these sets potentially. Uh, but there's a good chance that we're just going to do a something different entirely with the squad but if we don't do something different and we do bring certain mons and having like the not specific EV showed and like not all the moves showed is going to be uh, very helpful for us in the long run now week four and onward all team builders should be uh normally done like there should be like normal team builders but just this one i decided to go a little bit more vague into stuff without giving too much uh, details away but yeah hopefully you guys enjoy if you did hammer on that thumbs up button down below let me know what you potentially would have brought to this matchup if you were voting for our opponent zazo here and with that being said i will see you all tomorrow so later everybody no matter where you're at i'm not here to make friends it's time to attack and deplete your hp with a final smash don't make me turn around and pull a six foot Hacks. Hacks. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks.